what is up guys welcome back to another video in this video we're going to look at levels of refinement when it comes to exporting images and animations from twin motion and how that affects things what it affects and all of that so before we get into it if at any point in this video you happen to learn something which that's kind of why you're here right please demolish that like button it helps me very very much and i thank you thank you for that okay Getting into it now, we are looking at refinement. And so where do we even find this? Well, I, in my image, so I have my image here, and I'm ready to go, essentially. We're going to start with this image. I have export, and I need to actually choose which image, and I've chosen that. But in more, under my image or panorama video, whatever, I have these options, and I have refinement. And so by default, I believe it's off. So I have 3D mode, whatever, motion blur, blah, blah. That's fine. But what we care about is refinement for this video. And so... What is refinement? Well, refinement in this case has everything to do with reflections. And I will be honest here, I, because we're going to test this out, I'm gonna test this out with an image, and then I'm gonna test this out with an animation that I've done previously. I'm gonna end up exporting these things four different times with the refinement level off, low, medium, and high to see if we could see, uh, hopefully, a bit of a difference between uh, the levels of refinement and whether it's worth the time or not because as you add refinement, as you increase the level of refinement, the time to export drastically changes. Now, for a single image, just at 1080p, that isn't an issue at all. Uh, you're talking like seconds of a difference, so I would almost always have that on high. But when it comes to videos, that is where the significant uh, change will come. And so whenever I ultimately export those out, I'll let you know the time difference. And comparing that visually, we can decide, you know, yeah, it's worth the time or yeah, it's not. And so even before we get into that, I do want to show you uh, w really what we're working with here. And so I'm in just a basic bathroom, nothing special, but we have a mirror. We have a, I guess you could call it a reflective glass shower. And we've got various elements here that do have some reflection. You can see some of the reflection here. Uh, because of some of these lights and so that has a lot to do with this reflection probe being on or off uh, I have very mixed feelings about reflection probes they're very difficult to use and difficult to set up and place correctly and yada yada I have a whole other video on that you can see the difficulties I have with it uh, but also some of the the nice quality that it can add to your project and so I'll just go ahead and leave this one on it's not doing a whole lot it's, it's adding some reflections uh, onto this glass here mainly uh, but I do want you to pay attention to the reflection of this man in the mirror. This is, if we look at this material, it is a mirror. It is 100% reflection coming into the settings. It has metalness, which is what is required to have a mirror. Um, so I have all the mirror properties that I need to get 100% reflection. And if I even come up here, you can see, you know, it, it's supposed to work. But the thing with reflections and twin motion is that it's based on the active viewport. And by active viewport, I mean what you can see. And so as I zoom in here, we start to see less. And that's just because less of what is being reflected is visible. And so as I zoom out, we could see there's more of this, you know, I guess you could say this person seen in the reflection. But even the quality here, it's almost like it's multiplied so many times. And my hope with the refinement is slash was that this would be addressed and that we could actually see more of a uh, human looking person <laughs> come out of the 100% perfect mirror that this is. And so even if as I get closer to being more straight on, it does get better, but you can see it's it's not where we want it to be. And so we're going to get to experiment with that when it comes to refinement. Now, I will say if we come into our image and we come here into more and camera, visual effects we could come into reflections and so you might think well this is going to solve all our problems well <laughs> by default the ssr screen space reflections is on and screen all screen space reflections are they're just the natural reflections you would get from the materials that you have in your project the the level of reflection that you have on all of those materials that has nothing to do with the reflection probe so when i turn this off because I have the mirror producing reflection and I have this glass wall producing reflection. All of that will go away except for what is being added by the reflection probe. So let's turn this off. We can see I lose reflection down here from the floor and then specifically my mirror. Now to show you even better, I will turn the box reflection probe off 
and we can turn this on and off and we can see the difference here. You know, we're, we're getting some extra reflection, even from this guy on the ground being reflected on the floor that looks a little more natural. But we just lose this effect with the mirror. So I can't tell you if it's better to have the screen space reflection on for this scene or not, because if it's off, you know, we don't have any weird looking reflections coming out of the mirror, but then again, we don't have anything coming out of the mirror. Then the question is, is that a mirror? Um, it is in fact a mirror. So we kind of want it to be shown as a mirror. So anyways, we're going to take this image where it is now and end up exporting that four times with the different levels of refinement, off, low, medium, high. And in just a second, we can compare those. So let's do that right now. I will export this image. So what we can see between really <laughs> no refinement and low refinement is literally nothing. I just switch between them. I see almost nothing. Um, finally, we start to see something with medium and uh, it almost looks messier in the shower. And then finally the fourth, the high it, I guess it starts to clean up some of it a bit. Um, I can see a couple places where it is a bit more refined, mainly in the lights over the shower, uh, the, the glass over the shower looks up a little better, but you could see the main difference within like the mirror itself. Like the guy's not actually showing up. And so uh, I don't know if I'm missing something or if it's just a limitation that we have with twin motion or, or what, what it is. I'm curious if you do know, believe that in the comment section below. I, I just want to know how I can get a nice looking reflection here. Uh, it might have something to do with the reflection probe. It might not. Um, but it seems as though we should be able to see an actual person here um, because this is definitely the screen space reflection that is not showing up like I would anticipate it to. So in an attempt to get that reflection of the guy that we actually would like to see out of this mirror, um, this is what I had to do. I had to add this reflection probe, which is right against the mirror, like literally the face of the mirror. And it's essentially at eye level and I've made it so this camera is also at eye level. I'm, you know, pedestrian sitting on the ground. I'm at eye level looking at it. And I have this nice reflection. You know, this does end up changing as I move. It, it's not exactly where I would want it to be, but it does fit this frame quite well. And so unfortunately, that's the type of thing you're going to have to do, I think. But something else I wanted to point out is I have screen space reflections turned off. And so if I come into camera visual effects and screen reflections, I have them off because you'll see what happens when I turn it on. I get that nasty screen space reflection of this person. And so what, what is all this telling me? Well, this is all telling me that if you want reflections to be pretty accurate, you're going to have to add reflection probes based on your scene located correctly, the size correctly uh, to achieve the type of reflection that you want. And that I wouldn't rely so much on screen space reflection specifically for like, mirrors. You can see over here at the left, when I turn screen space reflection on or off, I get the same thing reflected in here, which is, you know, ugh, it's unfortunate that it, the quality isn't there, but it, it just isn't. My hope was that with the refinement, levels of refinement, that this would actually refine to the point where it looks pretty close to this type of reflection. Um, unfortunately not. And so it might be that it's best to riddle your scene with all types of uh, reflection probes just so you could get those reflections that you truly want and expect at the quality you would expect because of course uh, if you haven't seen my previous reflections probe video i would highly encourage you watch that because that'll run you down the path of reflective probes specifically but this is something i want to bring up again uh, reflection probe volume resolution so i can see it at full quality 1024 in my viewport and it will export that as well now this is not the default which is why i point this out to you also exports, you really want to have the updated reflections checked so that whenever you do export, it will update your reflections appropriate based on where you are, what you're looking at, blah, blah. And so that it's all up to date and good to go. So with all that, I do want to go ahead and export this image, but I'm not going to go through all of the different refinement levels. I'm just going to go through off and then high to see if we can see any difference with screen space reflections off. And my guess is we're not going to see any difference because the refinement should only be impacting those screen space reflections, but let's give that a test as well. And so here we go with it off. We can see, you know, it looks fine. It looks exactly like what we saw in Twin Motion. It's kind of what we expected. And then finally we look at high and, you know, we see a bit of a difference and 
that's actually good to see. I didn't quite expect that, but mainly within the shower, um, we're really starting to see a bit more of the reflection um, within the shower, which is kind of nice to see. So this tells me with screen space reflection off that the refinement does impact reflections, not just by not just with the screen space, but with the reflection probes themselves. So that's cool and that's good to know because that tells me it's actually worth exporting levels of refinement beyond off when I have screen space reflection turned off as well. Okay, so now let's look at the animation. And so I'm gonna blow right into those and we're gonna have an idea, uh, have them running side by side, both off and low, and we can go from there and see, hey, I'll, you know, this is working or it's not worth the time, all of that. We'll analyze that after the video plays. Well, guys, it's me back from the future. Obviously, I'm in a different shirt. It's a different day. Uh, it, it had to be because each one of those different videos took over two or three hours each. Like, that's ridiculous. And so, I mean, what we're trying to get at is, is it worth it? Is it, I mean, are we seeing a difference in the different levels of refinement when it comes to videos? Eh, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and advocate for it, especially spending hours doing that. Now, we'll say it didn't seem like it added a ton of time, even going from off all the way up to high. Um, you can use that judgment based on your own scene and everything. I'd uh, definitely experiment with it, but I don't know. It, it didn't seem like the most impactful thing to me. It's just kind of the way it is. But definitely try it out. I would say it's definitely always worth it for images because it either took five seconds to export an image or 10, 15, 20, like no time, basically no time difference. And... We saw, you know, I guess you could say just enough of a difference in those to make, to justify doing it and spending the extra time. It's worth it, I think. But we also went through what it can do as far as reflections and what it can't do. So I think the only way I might be able to tell a, one difference from another, uh, even between off and high in the video, is just pausing it and seeing if frame by frame I see any differences. But, you know, go through that and look at it again if you want, pause it and see, but it may not even be worth doing that. I don't know. It's kind of up to you. If you have the time, do it great. But otherwise, I don't know. So uh, hopefully in you know future releases of Twinmotion, we could see that we would have different options to turn on for exporting, kind of like refinement. I do like having that. Um, but maybe it's different shadows, ambient occlusion, anything else like that, different passes. I, I do enjoy having different render passes that we could turn on and off and have more control over, uh, whether it's different versions of images being exported, different passes being exported of images or video in that matter. I would just like to see that. So, you know, that will do it for this video. We looked at images and videos, animations exported from Twin Motion, looking at the different levels of refinement, see if they matter, see if they help. Uh, in some cases they do, some cases they don't, but that judgment is up to you and your scene, really. You, you're you going to have to make that judgment choice all on your own. So that will do it. I hope you did learn something. If you did, please, please, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.